For the first time within nine yearly releases, Assassin's Creed finally decided to take a year off and attempt to revamp their stale franchise. But did it pay off? What's going on guys, Snickle here, and in today's video I'll be walking you through the most efficient way to get the Platinum Trophy in Assassin's Creed Origins for the PlayStation 4. There are many ways to get through the content in this game, but this video will focus on maximizing the amount of fun while trying to minimize the number of playthroughs and overall mindless grinding. This is an open world game, so none of the trophies are missable throughout the list. There should be no story spoilers, as everything I discuss in the video will not go over anything specifically related to the story. This is a guide that's meant for people that have never played the game before. It's something they can watch to help them map out how they should go about getting this platinum. As for a breakdown of the trophy list, it consists of 34 bronze, 15 silver, 1 gold, and of course 1 platinum with a total of 51 trophies. There are no missable trophies and no online trophies as the game doesn't have any multiplayer functionality. 11 trophies are specifically related to the main story. As long as you beat the main story, you will not miss these. You're only required to play through the full story one time. There are two trophies related to specific side quests. Not all side quests need to be completed. Seven trophies are related to the various collectibles around the map, and four are related to the tournament and arena minigames. There are 14 trophies that I would consider incidental, meaning you'll probably earn these while just playing naturally through the game. 12 trophies can be considered random. These may require you to go out of your way a little bit, and you may need a guide. Down in the description below, you'll find a few useful links. One link will lead you to my breakdown of the trophy list, and another link will lead you to my playlist of guides for anything you might be finding troublesome throughout your playthrough. You will also find any other links that I think will be useful as well, and a full list of the order that I specifically earned my trophies. The best way to go about getting through this game is to complete side quests and locations within areas that are equal or lower to your current level. The reason you do this is to allow you to earn XP the most efficient way. Even though main story quests can net a decent amount of XP and boost your level up, these side quests and locations are going to give you the rest of that XP that you'll need to get to higher levels. In the upper right hand corner you will see the trophy tracker. When that reaches 51 out of 51, you should have collected every trophy in the game and successfully earned your platinum trophy. With all that being said, let's get into this guide. There are a total of 11 trophies that are related specifically to the story that you'll earn no matter how you play through the game. As long as you beat the main story, you will earn these trophies, and they are not missable at all. These next 14 trophies I would consider incidental, meaning that you'll more or less earn these while naturally playing through the game. This ranges from trophies like Shadow of Egypt, which is to kill 10 enemies in a row without being detected, to other trophies like Handyman, which is to craft 20 items. I was sure to put trophies in this section that I thought were easy enough that you may accidentally complete the requirement and wouldn't need a guide to do it. If you want to see what trophies in particular I put in this section, be sure to check the trophy breakdown link in the description below. That breakdown will clear up any issues or questions that you might have with my selection and placement of these trophies. Let's start to get into some of the stuff that you may not get through natural progression, starting with the two trophies that are tied to specific side quests. Now I'm not sure the significance of these two side quests having trophies related to them, so if you do know, let me know in the comments below. The first trophy is the Festival, which is to complete the side quest Lady of Slaughter. Now you'll gain access to this quest once you leave Siwa and you arrive at Yamu early on in the game. The only requirements to start the quest is it is suggested that you be level 8. You will need to find an opponent in the quest, so I would suggest to be the recommended level. The next trophy is Seven Farmers, which is to complete the side quest Seven Farmers. This quest can be found southeast of Crocodilopolis and below the river that runs below Crocodilopolis in the Uab Nome. You'll be able to access this quest right when you uncover the area of the map. The only requirement to start the quest is it is suggested that you be level 30. You will need to kill multiple enemies in this quest and essentially raid the tomb in Hermopolis, west of the Nile River, so I would suggest that you be level 30 with decent gear. Let's get into a few of the mini games that have trophies related to them. To start out, we have the Hippodrome Tournaments. These are chariot racing tournaments, and the first one that you should encounter will be east of Alexandria. You should access this area of the map fairly early in the main story. There should be a corresponding side quest to introduce you to the Hippodrome races. The first trophy is Ben-Hur, which is to win the first Hippodrome race. Again, the first race will be east of Alexandria, so complete it right when you gain access to it. 
There are no real requirements since you're racing chariots that the game gives you. The next trophy is Road Rage, which is to destroy an opponent in the Hippodrome race. If you don't get this trophy while naturally going for your first win, then just re-enter the Hippodrome race after you win and destroy an opponent. You don't need to win the race or do anything else. Next we can get into the arena events throughout the game. The only arena event that you have to enter is the one in Crocodilopolis, and you must complete all events to earn the trophy for those about to die. I do have a guide for this trophy that I will link in the description below. It shows how I got through all arenas, my gear, and my levels. Be sure to check that out if you're having any issues. Lastly, we have the trophy Fatality, which is to finish an arena boss with an overpowered attack. Overpowered attacks are ones that you have to press R1 and R2 in order to activate. Some are charge attacks, while others give you a time limit with a weapon buff. Each weapon has a different overpowered attack. You will probably get this while naturally playing through the Crocodilopolis arena, but keep it in mind while you're playing through. If you forget, just simply enter an arena and kill one of the bosses with the yellow health with an overpowered attack. Now to discuss one of the most grindy parts of the game, which is the collectibles. The most time consuming trophy in this section is Old Habits, which is to complete all locations. This may seem daunting at first when you look through how big the map is, but what I would do is worry about each location as you defog certain parts of the map. If you aren't aware, each section of the map has a recommended minimum level that you should have in order to kill enemies in that area. What I would do is complete a majority of side quests and all of the locations in a specific area before moving on to the next. This would help me level up in order to have high enough levels to be efficient in areas of the map that I didn't defog yet. All of the other collectible trophies will come while you're completing all locations or require minimal work to finish after completing all locations. If you're having issues with any of the tombs or papyrus puzzles, there are videos in the playlist linked below that will walk you through everything that you may be having issues with. Lastly, there are 12 trophies that I would consider random. These differentiate from the incidental trophies because some of these require setup and you may not accidentally get them throughout your playthrough, but if you did, then you are extremely lucky. You can find out which trophies these are in the trophy breakdown link in the description below. Also in the description below, in the Assassin's Creed Origins playlist, you'll find guides for a majority of these trophies, so if you are having any issues with them, be sure to check out that playlist. After completing everything discussed previously, you should earn this Platinum Trophy, Earn Them All. So to answer the question I asked earlier, was this game worth the two year wait? I can confirm for myself that it was. The atmosphere of the game is superb, with one of the best maps that I've seen in a game to date. If you've never been into Assassin's Creed but you like RPGs, this might be the game for you. The whole rework of the game makes it feel like a whole new franchise. Anyway, a lot of these trophies you will get while just playing through the game and enjoying everything it has to offer. There are a handful of trophies that you may have to do some additional work to get. Just to give a brief summary, the best and most efficient way to get this Platinum is to complete locations and side missions as you defog areas on the map. This will cut down on having to go back and finish areas of the map after you've completed the main story. Other than that, just enjoy the game. This game did take me nearly 6 weeks to Platinum, but this was because of the amount of PS3 multiplayer games that I was playing at the time, and also that I was making video guides for all the tombs and trophies which can take a decent amount of time. Realistically, you could get this game done in about a week or two, putting in about 40-ish hours. There is DLC as of this video being recorded, so once you get to Platinum, I would advise to go for the 100% since the DLC is just an amazing extension of the base game. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. Also, let me know below your experience with the game. Did you like it? Have you played it yet? I would love to hear from everyone. If you did find this video helpful though, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you are having any issues with any random trophies or tombs, be sure to check the playlist linked in the description below. It has all types of helpful videos. And if you want to see my breakdown of the trophy list, you can find a link for that in the description below as well. Anyway, I hope to see you around sometime soon.